Hey everyone, Redneck Computer Geek here. So, with the GT6000 here over the years, you guys have asked me tons of questions about all the implements that I've either built or I purchased for it and things like that. So this video, we're going to cover all of them. There's a reason why this video was delayed. A lot of you have talked about the one-point hitch implements that I built. The company that built my one-point hitch actually was bought out about two years or so ago. The hitch actually disappeared off of the market. The company that bought them out last summer brought them back and redid their manufacturing and all of the units are now back on the market, which is why we're making this video now. So we'll have Jesse come over with the camera and we'll start with the front with the dump loader I built. So this is a dump loader and basically what we have is we have a, a winch on the front we have what is called a Warren plowing fair lead. And basically, if you look, you can see obviously the bottom roller is about three times the size it normally would. These are designed to be able to go and take the impact of plowing on the front of an ATV, or in this case, a tractor. That just loops down in order to hit a rod down here. The mounting point on the back is the original dozer mounting planes. Uh, mounting point for the GT6000 and then if we come up here you lift it up and down I'll show that for a sec and normally there's a piece of rope that goes from here back but that's why this handle is here is because I discovered over the years I usually tend to break the rope with a fully loaded bucket and there we go as you back up with the machine, the bucket comes back up and around and clicks in, as you'll see in video clips. Next, we've got our Craftsman Dozer Blade. There's different qualities of these blades when you're hunting around and you're looking for them. This one's actually been cut off. It's missing about a foot and a half out the rear. And that's because of the fact that I ended up bolting this in to lift it with the winch instead of using the implement adjustment. Now, when you're dealing with these blades, you're gonna see that there's different qualities of these blades. And the more springs and the bigger the springs, the better the quality of the blade. So this is the higher quality blade that they make. And this one over here, if we pull it out, it has a much softer single spring. The adjustment on it is way thinner. And if you look at the cutting blade side, the cutting blade side is just this little bolt-on piece right here. Yeah. 
versus an entire reinforced edge on this one. And this system here actually comes down and is welded into the reinforced edge, which is why these dozer blades are way stronger than the regular plow blade. So if we come over here, we'll start taking a look at the implement. So back a few years ago, these were really expensive. They were in the $300 category. They had just recently come out on the market. So I created this. It was a pivot one point hitch, which is two inch steel that I cut out. This is a hitch pin adapter that usually has a big giant yoke over here. And this is cut out to go and slide and maneuver over that. And this is just your regular stuff for a two inch receiver hitch. These have dropped in price. They're now down into the $200 range. They work really, really well. It fits into a two inch receiver on the back and this is set up in order to be four two inch on this end. All you do is you just adjust it to what height you want. It's that simple. So with this unit, they make about five to six different attachments. The one thing I'll tell you about buying these, there'll be a whole ton of links down in the description, is that basically they make a ton of them and when they're sold out, that's it for the year, they'll be back next year. That was my problem that I ran into these. So what we have here is we have our standard pull and push blade. And the thing that I love about the one point hitch system is all you need is just your regular weld on or coupler two inch pieces. So it just has a pin that goes through it. I can either mount it as a push out the back or I can mount it as a pull with the tractor. This right here is my next one. As you can see, the Impact logo is on this. I purchased this just before the company got bought out. They still are listed under the Impact brand. So when you're looking them up, if you look up Impact and then one point, you'll find all of these. I love using this for breaking ground. You can drive it all the way down in and pull it up. If you're trying to go and put lines in um, for water lines or anything like that and they need to be buried a couple of feet down, this is really great for breaking ground down that far. The one point hitch, if we come back to it for just a sec, the height of the entire unit is adjustable right here. So you can take this entire unit and you can drop it all the way down to here and you can literally take that tooth and you can put it underground for almost a foot and a half deep behind the tractor as long as you straddle it. So next we've got the cultivator. Um, this is the older style cultivator. The newer style cultivator that they have out now has the tines on this end adjustable and on this end. They're actually able to be brought in and expanded the entire length. And you can add one or two more if you wanna buy aftermarket ones. So yet again, this is the older style. The newer style is more adjustable. I love this for breaking out sod if you have your if you have an area you need to pull sod up these actually dig in underneath and it makes sod strips that pull up really nice and easily this has this welded onto the top of it because what i found was that the one point hitch presses it down nicely but at times i needed about a cinder block worth of weight in order to be able to push it down in as far as it needed to be if the ground was just a little too hard. Next we have my hot water tank box scraper. So Impact Implements makes a box scraper. They make a box scraper that I'll post a link for in the description. It is 36 inches wide at $280. 
I simply just could not fathom the idea of $280. So, what we have is yet again, I love the fact all I have to do is have just a two inch receiver. So this is a regular standard bolt-on slash weld-on two-inch receiver. There's nothing special about it. You can buy these at any automotive store. Underneath, we've got our set of teeth, and we've got our dragging blade back here. This is all made out of bed rail or lawn tractor blades because it's spring steel, and it needs to be able to bounce when it ends up getting hit. So these are lawn tractor blades. My cutting edge back here is actually bed frame because it's spring steel. Um, if you ever go to do this yourself, you need to set it up so that at level, your teeth actually stick out about a half an inch to an inch deeper than your back cutting blade does in order to level things out. And then what is probably the most funny of all of the implements that I end up using is a bed. It is a regular spring, a box spring out of a bed. Yet again, I'll post a link for these. It's a regular standard Kurt all-terrain vehicle two-inch receiver that you put onto an ATV. And I love these because you can mount it onto the one-point hitch like this, and you can mount it onto the one-point hitch like this, and you can mount it onto the one-point hitch like this. So you can have this to tie off on a drag. You can have this in order to be able to put a ball in so you, you can use your one-point hitch for lifting a trailer. If, if you mount it this direction, yet again, you've got another tie-on point that you can get to. And the reason why I like mounting it like this is because this acts as a clip so I can come in underneath something and I can lift it up with my one point hitch. So I buy two or three of these at any point in the season when they go on sale because I weld them up and I turn them into other one point hitch attachments. So this I drag behind me in order to be able to level out the driveway and clean up the other areas. every single attachment for my GT6000. Yes, this is the one that has the horizontal shaft engine that goes this way. And yes, it is a Roper 633 with high low. It's what I recommend for using for all of this stuff. The, uh, this, the GT6000 with the hydro probably would do most of these implements, but the Roper is definitely the stronger transmission in the long run. There you go. I hope I helped out everybody and please feel free to go through the links in the description and hopefully find what you need.